Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hello World Guy. In this video we are going to get started with our new game because we finished the Pong game in the last episode and as I had said in the first video we are going to create uh, a 3D game now. So uh, the 3D game, what is going to be the game? So I have decided that it is basically going to be a, uh, a like a first person shooter but not really that complicated. We are not going to implement uh, complicated enemy AI or anything of that. But it's going to be a very simple shooter which I hope that uh, uh, you will find interesting. So let's get started with our first 3D project. So as you can see I have got my Unity Hub opened up and I'm just going to hit this new project button to create a new project and it opens up this window and as you can see we have got a bunch of options here and in the last time we choose this 2d template but this time we are going to click on this 3d template because we want to of course create a 3d game i'm just going to call this one shooter you can select the location here uh, you remember that i hope so i can uh, now cre click on this create button and that should start creating my project all right so as you can see i have got my unity loaded up and uh, we are in an empty scene right now so this is a 3D scene and as you can see the viewport is now a little bit different, actually a lot different. So I'm basically going to first show you the uh, way of navigating around this viewport. So this is a 3D viewport, you can look around, move, pan, do a lot of other things. Uh, so uh, first of all, in order to actually look around in the scene, you need to right click with your mouse and then you can turn around. And then you can see I can turn around to this camera or turn around there or, and I can look around and that, that's pretty cool. And if you're holding the right mouse button, right mouse button, you can use W, A, S, and B to uh, actually just uh, move around the scene. So you can use S and D to move left, and uh, you can use A and D to move left and right, and W, S up to move forward and backward towards your direction. And then you can use right mouse button to change where you're looking, kind of like a first person flying thing. Uh, so uh, you, if you're not holding the right mouse button, you can use the arrow keys to move around. And uh, uh, you can select objects by just left clicking on them. So as you can see, I just selected the camera. And now you can, uh, one more thing you can do is uh, pan, scroll out and in to uh, zoom. And you can also use the middle mouse button to pan around the scene like this. Alright, so uh, you will get more used to this as you practice more. But uh, let's just get to uh, adding some things to our empty scene. So first thing I would like to show you is this camera. So you can see if I select this camera right now then uh, it's it's not really like the camera that uh, we had in our 2d scene of course now this is a perspective camera now th what that basically means is that in in the 2d uh, project we had a uh, orthographic camera uh, and what that basically did was that it had a it had a fixed and so uh, the way to explain it is if I, if I go under the camera settings and i change this uh, projection here to orthographic then you can see if I zoom in real close, then you can see that as you can see this kind of uh, box here. So this box is basically representing what we will see. Now, uh, if it's straight, it means that we uh, we, uh, we will basically our scene will lack depth. Uh, an object placed here will have the same size, and an object placed back over there, even though in real life it's supposed to get smaller. So uh, and I can use this size variable to change the actual size of the camera. Uh, just we did uh, in the 2d but of course this is 3d therefore i'm going to change this to perspective now what that does is that now we are looking with an angle which is our field of view which means that object placed farther away will be away from the camera and thus will be smaller uh, and i can change the field of view uh, in here like this i can uh, shrink it down to like uh, 20 or something and i can uh, get it big uh, as big as possible by changing it to like 180 but I'm going to uh, currently leave it at 90, which is um, really just a standard value. You should use 90 unless you've got a particular reason for not using it. So that's basically the camera. Now uh, you can also see the other thing here, which is a directional light, as you can see in the hierarchy. Now, uh, if this is a 3D scene, therefore we actually have got lights and shadows in here. In the 2D, uh, in the 2D game, in the Pong game, we basically did not have that because it was like a completely pixel-based coloring. But now we have got lighting as well. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. And uh, our scene cannot work without lights. If I turn it off, then the scene will get dark inside of the game view. But that's not happening because currently there is nothing in our scene. 
So we can uh, change the uh, directional light properties here inside of this, but I'm not going to do that. Now the directional light is like a sun sort, so uh, it doesn't really matter where we place it, it's just the direction of it and it will cast light from that direction and it didn't, really doesn't have a position. Now I'm going to go here and now we can add uh, our first object. So I'm going to go in the hierarchy and I'm going to right click and go under 3D object and then I'm going to select cube. This should well add a cube to our scene. Now I'm going to rename this cube to ground because this is going to be our ground. And if I go under the transform then you can see that uh, the position is not really in the center and I can change it back to zero. And now one thing that I would like to show you is in here you've got, you've got the toolbox and you, I think that you noticed that before but if you didn't then you've basically got arrows here which will allow you to move the object on individually on axis and you can click in the middle to move it on all axes at once. And as you can see I'm just doing that and yeah that, that works. Uh, and also if I um, select this rotate tool here in the, in the toolbox then I can rotate the uh, cube like so. And if I select this scale option, then I can scale it. And there's also this transform if I want to do all of that in a single operation. But we really don't need that. I'm going to select that uh, position tool now, move tool. And then I'm going to go here and reset the transform by going in here and select your reset to set all the values back to their default values. Um, yes, that works. Now, uh, now you can see that this is uh, pretty much working. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down on the y-axis, and I'm going to change. So y is up. Remember that y is up. X is to the right, and d is to the front in Unity. If you use like Blender, Blender before, then uh, z is up in there, and then x is to the front, and d is to the right. But in Unity, it's different. So I'm going to change the y to 0.1, which will make it thin. And then I'm going to change the X to 10 and the Y to 10 as well. And now you, you can see that we have got a pretty much a, a ground here. Now this is uh, this is good, but uh, we need to now, uh, I like to change the color of this. How can we do that? Uh, now uh, the color is uh, not as simple as it was in the, uh, in the 2D in Unity. We just used a uh, property of color in the right renderer component, but now we don't have that, of course. So we are going to use something called materials. Now, a material is a really complicated thing, actually. Uh, you can make it as complicated as you like, uh, and that determines a lot of properties, and uh, it's really, um, you know, and you can write custom shaders for it, which will uh, create a lot of different effects, but we are just going to use a normal material for now. And that material is going to define a bunch of different properties for our object, like its color, how rough it is, how shiny and smooth it is, how metallic it is, and other stuff like normal mapping, etc. You don't need to worry if you don't understand all of it. For now, just I'm going to create a new folder here and call it materials. It's a good idea to have your uh, assets always organized. And to create a material here by going under create and selecting material from here. And this, I'm going to call this material ground. Now, if in this material you can see a bunch of properties here, and there are a lot of them, and you can change them and see what uh, happens. But I'm just going to go into the albedo here. Albedo, it just you can consider it to be the color, and I'm going to change it to a grassy green color. Then you can see we have got metallic and smoothness here. Since glass is not metal and it's not smooth, I can change that to zero. And as you can see, we have also got a a uh, preview of it down here and you can see we have got the circle which is so if I increase the smoothness then you can see that it becomes shiny and if I increase the metallic as well then it becomes like practically glass but I'm going to uh, turn both of them down to zero and that should make it like rough like chalk or something and now I'm going to just select this ground material and then drag it onto our ground object and as you can see now our ground object is uh, green and if I select it then you can see in the material here we have got ground material we can also edit it here which actually changes the whole material so uh, you know it's not like it doesn't only change the object you change the whole material and you can have multiple objects that use the same material so alright with that we have got a ground done so now we can get to adding our player Alright, so how are we going to add the player? Now, uh, in the Pong series, we used a single object which was a square for the player and we just scaled it and decided it to our preferences. But uh, I'm not going to do that exact approach right now because if your object is a little more uh, complicated and just 
a simple, you know, a very simple shape and then a couple of scripts on that. You uh, should use uh, um, a separate child object for each of the separate components. So what I'm going to essentially do here is uh, I'm going to go under my hierarchy just to explain what I mean. I'm going to right click here and create an empty game object with no components at all, only the transform. And then I'm going to uh, rename it to player. Then I'm going to uh, move it to the center of the screen, uh, for the center of the game world, sorry. Uh, and then I'm going to just move it a little bit up. And, uh, and that's just an empty game object. You can only see the arrow, there is nothing visible. So what I'm going to do is click on this game object, and then I'm going to go on the 3D object and add in a capsule, which will actually represent uh, the player. Now, uh, I did, the reason that I didn't uh, uh, just do the capsule directly because our player is going to have separate, uh, the actual logic of the movement and stuff will be on the player, yeah. while the capsule will only represent the uh, look of the player and then we can add more components here for the separate parts of the player like a gun maybe and then the, we are going to attach the camera obviously, so all of that. Now, uh, this is good, uh, but uh, we really don't actually need this cylinder because uh, the player is not going to be visible anyways inside of the game. It's going to be first person, as I said. Uh, but uh, we, I, I have added that so that we know where the player is inside of edit mode. Now, you can see that we have got a slight slider here. It's represented by this green outline. And uh, we, uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and select this capsule here. I'm going to just rename this to... Uh, graphics, this is going to be the player graphics, and then I'm going to go under the capsule collider and I'm going to remove that component. And because we, uh, we are not going to add the collider here, so I'm going to go back in my player, in the empty player component, and then I'm going to uh, here add another component uh, and uh, I'm going to add the collider and everything inside of the player. Now, uh, uh, what component do we need to add to make the player move? So there are a bunch of ways to do this in Unity, but uh, we are actually going to get to the real movement in the next part, next video. But in this video, we are going to implement that camera so that we can, uh, you know, look around with the camera and stuff. So uh, because it's not uh, because it's really not that simple. It's a little bit involved, and uh, I don't want to make the videos too long. So let's let's just quickly. I'm going to select the player. And just leave it like this and then I'm going to actually right click on the player and add in a cube and um, to give uh, this is just so that we know where the player is currently looking I'm going to just scale this cube down on the Z uh, down on the Y axis and then uh, on the Z axis maybe a little bit and then on the X axis then I'm going to increase its scale on the Z axis and then I'm going to move it up and forward Oh, and it's a bit too thin, so increase a little bit more on the X and then decrease on the Y. And then this is going to basically help us uh, recognize the direction that the player is currently facing. This is not going to be visible in game, just to give us a visual cue of what is going on. All right, I'm going to make this cube a part of the GFX object, because, uh, which gives us a nice hierarchy here. That's what it's called hierarchy after all. So now uh, this is a first person game, so we need the camera to be attached to the player. What I'm going to do is just select our main camera and drag it to the player, yeah, as simple as that. Uh, and then I'm going to go under the transform component and then I'm going to set uh, the position of the camera to 0, 0. And as you can see, the camera is now in the center of the player and it's looking the wrong way. Now the camera is actually looking the right way, it's that, that our uh, these sunglasses type of things are at the wrong position. Uh, so I'm going to, as you can see, that position on the uh, Z axis is negative, but it really should be positive. So yeah, they are now fitting the right way. Now our main camera is uh, not uh, at the correct vertical position, so I'm just going to move it up and then a little bit forward maybe. So now we can see everything in first person. Uh, I'm just a little bit more forward uh, because we don't want to see uh, this uh, uh, this sunglasses thing that we added in from the camera because if I move it back, then you can see in the preview here that the top of it is kind of visible, which looks bad. I'm going to just move it forward until it's not. Okay, so that works, and if I go into the game view, you can see that everything is here. So now we can actually get to coding the behavior for the camera. So uh, how are we going to uh, do that? 
and now uh, in the first position camera first let me uh, tell you what the actual controls are going to be like so of course we will be able to move our mouse inside the game view and uh, to move the whole player left and right but of course you can only move the camera up and down uh, but when you look left and right the whole player should turn so uh, just to keep that in mind and with that I can, think we can get started creating the uh, camera script so what I'm going to do is of course create a new folder just going to call it camera Oh, sorry, not camera, script. Uh, this is going to contain all of our scripts. I'm going to go under here, right click, create a new C sharp script. And I'm just going to call it uh, uh, something like camera or mouse look, I guess. You can call it mouse look because it's just using for, uh, we are just using it for looking the mouse, uh, looking with the mouse, and uh, that's it. And then I'm going to select my uh, main camera object, and then I'm going to take this script and drag it in here. Alright, uh, let it compile. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to just drag it onto the main camera like that and you can see it adds it here. So now I'm going to just double click on this to open it up in Visual Studio. And, and as soon as that happens, we should have an empty script with just a start and update method. Alright, as you can see the script is, uh, Visual Studio has loaded up and we have got our empty script here. So first I'm going to remove the two unnecessary using tabs, tags, and then I'm going to uh, just uh, um, uh, really what we want to do here is uh, a couple of things actually. So first, we, of course, we want to uh, move the player left and right with the camera, uh, with the mouse, you know, because, uh, so that we can look around. So I'm going to only add left and right movement first. So let's just go up here and I'm going to define a couple of variables here. Uh, so first, we're going to be serialized field so that it shows up in the inspector. It's going to be a private. Uh, and uh, it's going to be transform. So a transform component is just like you know a transform which can be position, rotation, and scale. So we are going to have it reference to a transform called the player transform. So this will basically be uh, so that we can actually rotate the player when we need a reference to it. And here we are going to get the action actually rotate the player. And now how will that happen? So uh, for, uh, the first thing that I want to tell you is that. Uh, when we are actually rotating the player, we want to of course rotate it with the mouse x. So uh, how do we get the mouse x's value? Now in uh, in the pong series for input, we just use input dot get key and we uh, and get key down and we just uh, use a specific key code which are hard coded inside of our application to get the value. Now uh, Unity uh, now of course nothing stops you from using that kind of system, but uh, uh, it's really not the best. Uh, idea to do so. So uh, the better way is to use the input system in Unity, which you, you know you can basically create uh, different input axes and buttons, and then you can set them to specific keys. So for example, you are going to have a an, a button called shoot, and in the code you will only use shoot. And whenever you want to change shoot, you can change it inside of the project settings, and uh, you don't need to keep updating your script and recompiling every time you want to change the controls. And you can add multiple controls to a simple thing without using tons of like if statements and etc. So uh, what I'm going to do here inside of this update function right now is I'm going to have a float value here called uh, call it mouse x I guess. And we'll set that is equal to input input dot get axis. Now get axis get an well get get an axis. So an axis basically is like uh, it contains of a it's like a like a number line. It consists of two points and then it can be anywhere in between. Uh, so uh, the axis we are going to use is one called mouse x. Remember the spaces and the capitalization had to exactly match this. Now mouse x is an axis that has already been set up for us. I'm going to show you how to set up your own axis. Mm, uh, and but this is already done for us, so we can just use it directly. You can change the name there, and then you can change it inside of your code as well. But uh, uh, the name inside of your project settings. So just to show you, if I go under Unity, oh, and it's going to compile now. All right, if I go under File, uh, Edit, and then Project Settings, inside of here we have got an option for Input Manager. If I select that, then you can. If I go under Axis, then you can see there are a bunch of different axes here. Uh, so all of these are basically different values and you can see we have got one called mouse x here uh, which and the uh, capitalization and the uh, spaces and everything has to exactly match this and you can see that he's basically uh, uh, using the x movement of the mouse now this is the old input system in unity but uh, 
you can use the new input system which is uh, really better but uh, that's uh, still not been completely implemented inside of Unity. It's not directly integrated. It's a separate package. And anyways, we uh, are just going to use this for now. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a tutorial on the new input system. So for now, but we are just going to use this old input system. And as you can see, we have got uh, an axis here called mouse X and also one called mouse Y along with a bunch of other ones. You can add your own axis by changing the size value here and then, you know, just doing your own thing. But I'm going to cross uh, out of this and then go back into Visual Studio. And here now we have got the value of our mouse x, which represents how much the mouse is moving on the x axis. It doesn't represent where the mouse is, it represents how much the mouse is moving. Now, uh, of course, when we are actually rotating the player, we want to, um, you know, we can't just rotate it by one degree because that would be too slow. So I'm going to create a serialized field here. This is going to be private. And this is going to be a float and I'm going to call this mouse sensitivity. Alright, now I'm going to go under uh, this update method and in here I'm going to go player transform dot there's a method here called rotate which uh, uh, which rotates uh, is based on a vector that we give. Now this vector 3 will basically uh, contain the x, y and z rotation separately. So I'm going to hit and go here and say new vector 3 and here we are going to uh, we can supply it with three values now remember that the z and the y axis is the one that we want to rotate around uh, and we should uh, we are going to use that but actually what i'm going to do here is not do that manually and instead use a value here called uh, trans uh, player transform dot up which will basically give us the up direction of the player so if the player is rotated uh, you know uh, to the left or right it will uh, rotate the player correctly on that uh, it's a little complicated, but just using this makes things a little easier. So I'm going to multiply this by uh, by the uh, actual mouse x value we have got, and that's going to be multiplied by the uh, mouse sensitivity. Actually, I'm just going to multiply this by mouse x, and when we are getting the mouse x, I'm going to multiply that by our sensitivity. And also, now the uh, this <laughs> this code appears that so it works, but it actually doesn't because uh, the update method is called once per frame as this comment says uh, and uh, uh, the frame rate may be different on different devices so this is frame rate dependent on some devices the mouse may move faster on some it may move slower well we really don't want that so uh, what you can do is multiply this by a value called time the delta time which uh, as you can see represents the la uh, represent the interval between the last and current frame which makes sure that uh, our uh, movement will always remain same on all devices. For the sensitivity, I've been, uh, sensitivity I'm going to just set it to 2 by default. And uh, I think that should work. So if I open a Unity and I select my main camera and then for the player transfer I'm going to just drag our main player object here, the main player object and then I'm going to uh, set the mouse sensitivity to something like 2 and then I'm going to hit the play button and it hopefully will work. So if I go and I turn my mouse, it is uh, really not working. But if I increase the sensitivity of the sensitivity up, then you can see it's kind of working, but it's very slow still. So mm, I'm going to uh, set the sensitivity to something like 200. And the sensitivity, you know, you can uh, uh, set it to whatever value you like. But I think something like 200 is not too bad. It's a bit of a bit of slow, but about 500. Yeah, that that is pretty good. I'm just going to leave it at uh, 500 and that's all right now one obvious problem you noticed here is that uh, when we try to rotate around it's working and it's nice but our mouse kind of goes to the other side of the screen and it gets out of the play area so that that's not really uh, that good so what we can do to prevent that is actually do something called locking the mouse so if I go under my script in the start method I'm, what I'm going to do is just set uh, the cursor cursor lock mode uh, cursor cursor dot lock lock state is equal to cursor lock mode uh, which is an enumerator dot locked now what this will do is it essentially prevent our mouse from going out of the window unless we hit escape or something to make it specifically go out which will uh, mm, which, which will uh, so for example if we got a windows game then uh, if i click inside the game then you can see our mouse get uh, it disappears and now we can move around without our cursor moving and if i hit escape then our cursor appears back again and we can uh, interact with the other stuff and if I click inside then it's again like it was before. So we have got our uh, player body rotating as we wanted it to. 
All right, so now we are going to rotate the camera vertically. Now to do that, first I'm going to get the vertical position of the mouse, position, uh, movement of the mouse actually, uh, by uh, creating a float mouse Y here and uh, axis, uh, and just for the axis name, I'm going to say mouse Y, and then I'm going to multiply this by mouse sensitivity, multiply by time dot delta time. All right, and that gives us the vertical position of the mouse. Uh, and now we need to rotate the camera uh, on a specific axis. Which axis exactly? If I open up Unity and then I uh, select the rotate tool from here, then I need to select my camera. Then you can see that if I rotate it on the X axis, then you can see that it's moving up and down. So that's the axis we want to rotate it on. So I'm just going to control Z to uh, get it back to zero. And now I'm going to go under uh, my uh, script and then I'm going to we want to rotate it on the x axis we know that now uh, I'm just going to go up here and for convenience and we are going to use a separate variable for this I'm going to create a private flow here float called x rot uh, x rotation and I'm going to set it to zero by default and each uh, each frame we are going to say x rot and we are going to subtract the mouse y from it so uh, you know, the reason we are subtracting uh, is that uh, the way the mouse axis is organized. So if we uh, were to add, then it will actually move in the opposite direction of where we are moving our mouse. Uh, so with that, uh, we have got our axis rotation subtracted and that's good. But uh, of course, this won't actually work because we are not rotating the camera. We are just changing a variable. So I'm going to just set the camera rotation to that. Uh, how are we going to do that? Uh, well, of course, this script is going to be on the camera, so I'm going to just go transform dot, uh, and here we can say transform dot local rotation, and then we are going to set the local rotation because uh, we do not want to, uh, we cannot use the rotate function because that essentially adds the rotation. So I'm going to say transform dot local rotation is equal to, and then rotation in Unity, if you didn't know before, which I assume you didn't, is are basically handled through quaternions. A quaternion is a complicated four-dimensional thing, which which is really a, it's a lot of math, and you can uh, do research if you want, but uh, we are uh, not going to bother into that. Quaternions are really complicated, but uh, I'm just going to use uh, a really handy function which will let us uh, give it a vector 3 with 3 axes and it will automatically convert that into a 4 dimensional quaternion. So that function is a static function of class quaternion called quaternion dot, uh, it's actually pronounced Euler even though it looks like Euler, but uh, anyways, quaternion dot Euler for some reason. And uh, we can give it a vector 3 or just 3 values. So I'm going to, uh, for the x, I'm going to afford you our x notation. And for the y and z, we can just say uh, 0 and 0. Because our camera is not going to rotate it on those axes. So yeah, this, this is pretty much the converting script. Now if I uh, go under Unity, hit the play button. And hopefully it will work. And as you can see, uh, it kind of uh, uh, worked a little weirdly. But now you can see we can uh, look around and uh, it, it's pretty good. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. And if I, if I turn around, then the whole player will move. And if I look up and down, then only the camera will move. And you can see the shadow of our player here. Now, if I uh, uh, go under my layout here which and change it to 2 by 3, which gives us this kind of layout, then I can see the scene view as well. And as you can see, if I rotate around, my player is rotating around, and if I rotate up and down, only the camera is changing. So that's that's pretty good. I'm going to just change the layout back to default. Yeah, by the way, there are a couple of interesting layouts here. You can choose which one you like. Uh, now, uh, this this was working, but there's a little problem. Let me show you. If I uh, hit the play button, then uh, firstly, of course, it starts at a really weird angle. But if I move this up. Then you can see I can kind of go all the way around. That shouldn't happen. That that kind of like twisting your neck in a really long way. So I'm uh, going to. Uh, we need to remit that camera rotation. So how can we do that? Well, we basically uh, need to uh, make sure that the x rotation variable stays between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees. Uh, so how can we do that? Well, we can uh, clamp it. I mean, you might say uh, like uh, if x rotation is greater than 90 then 30 to 90 etc etc but we are going to just use a convenient max function here so i'm going to say x dot is equal to math f dot uh, clamp when the clamp is a really nice function so it's going to clamp uh, basically take the value and then uh, clamp it inside of a range i hope you know that uh, so it's going to be negative 90 uh, and positive 90. 
so that that should work if I uh, let you decompile and I open it up and if you hit play then our rotation should hopefully stay between negative and positive 90 if I move up you can see it's working and uh, we cannot move it back further than negative 90 and you cannot move it down more than 90 which is all good so anyways I am going to end the video here and I will see you in the next video in which we will add the movement to our players so bye and stay tuned for the next video